Okay, so let's give you um, a couple of updates. Um, what's coming Friday is kind of a big day for a lot of you um, because you've been coasting for a week and a half now. Oh, okay, so here's what to do. If you're an architecture one, you have the pre-state assessment, you have the AEC careers quiz, the intro to architecture careers quiz, the design process and plans quiz, and the print reading applications. And those are between modules one and two. So that's two weeks worth of stuff. That's all due Friday at 5 p.m. So don't go on any camping trips till you get that done. Yes, Friday by 5 p.m. Yeah, you need to be admitted to Weber State by Friday. Not, don't worry about the classes, but you got to pay that $30 by Friday. Super important. Or it's bye bye bye, because I can't, I can't extend that date. It's a federal date. Okay, Architecture 2 students. You have the state skills pre-assessment. You have the construction terms, and you have the Revit software interface. And those again are all due by Friday, 5 p.m. Woohoo. Architecture three, and he's not present, so you know, Godspeed, man. Um, state skills pre-assessment, um, ready the architectural file from AutoCAD to be moved into Revit. And Commercial remodel plan scope. What are you going to do with that? We have, where's my architecture three? No one in here. So. You? No. I don't think so. Don't, don't throw me off, man. I have one architecture three, and that's Cody. You have two. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened there. If you need to change it, get a hold of your counselors right away and get that change, okay? Uh, I can tell which one you're in. Um, it says architecture one, architecture two, architecture three. Um, which one do you want to know? Did I call you? Did I do the tenants? Did you first? We're in the first group. When I call the tenants, we're in the first group. You weren't paying attention. Okay, one second. Let me tell you where you're at. Okay, your name is. Give me your name again. Caleb. Caleb. Last name, sir. You're in architecture one. So next must be two, and then after that be three. Okay? And that's a lot of college credits. A lot of college credits. And working on adding another one. I have another question. Yeah. That. yeah. On my uh, schedule, it only has me in architecture one. for one semester of term. Correct. You do, you have, because these are prerequisite based classes, you have to do one before you can do two. And since it's a college credit, that makes it easier. So you have to do one before you do two, even though they're all meeting at the same time, you have to have one complete thing in your mind. The way you're set up. Okay. So I just get to keep you longer. Okay, um, so that's what's kind of coming up and due. Um, our goal is to get our house plan uh, floor, main floor walls done this week if possible. That's kind of the goal. That's a long way to go. Okay. Um, so we looked at a few AutoCAD commands last time. We looked at drawing a line and setting a length for it. So you start a point, get the first one in the right direction, type in your number, and you're good to go. Then we used offsets a lot. We used a little bit of trim. Uh, did we do fill up? Three corners, we're going to do fill up. Okay. It doesn't usually come up too much because we'll do them room by room as we go. Um, what I want to do is kind of give you a few. Um, do, 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 um, room size things to help you a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna probably give them one bank of lights. Kind of give you some help here as you go on. That's what I'm gonna show. That's a hallway noisy. <clears throat> okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use the a whiteboard a little bit here to uh, kind of get things started. And it's not my favorite way of doing this, but it will work for what we're doing. So please bear with. A um, couple things. Uh, your house plans, you can modify them a little bit, okay? You don't have to feel tied into them. Um, I don't. I always change them. You know, it's kind of one of those things. Okay, so let me close that. Let's get a pen here. Blit. All right, so a couple of things I want to talk about real quick. 
hope. Okay, so what we're gonna do is let's start talking first about a bedroom here, okay? And wow, that's fancy big, that's not a room. If you feel like you know the materials, you're gonna be more confident in class. Okay, so let's talk about the room. It has to have a closet. Are you have any closet? Okay. Um, if it doesn't have a closet, you gotta call it something else. So if you choose not to have a room as a closet, as a bedroom, just remove the closet, okay? Now, if I'm gonna draw a closet out here, and it's gonna be rough, because this is not a drafting tool. By any means. So I've got a closet, and it'll most likely have a wall that extends into it. So we see a door. I'm not gonna do a lot of erasing. We need to know size, and that's the big thing on these, is what size the closet. So the distance, from one wall to the next on the inside is what? What is that value? Two feet. So not quite as big as you think, but two feet, okay? It's two feet in there. Remember, shoulders 22 inches for adult males, hangers 22 inches to hang the clothes on. So that's gonna be two feet. So that's the biggest thing to keep in track of, okay? Now, if it's a walk-in closet, they can be whatever size you want. But a walk-in, if it's a walk-in closet, that's gonna be a four foot, typically by four foot. Notice I'm using different ways of showing feet and inches. This apostrophe means foot. The larger number means foot. This upper superscript is inches, whereas this is inches here, okay? So there's different ways we show that. There's a third way, so let's talk about the door on this. So a closet that's normal will either have one of two types of doors. It'll have either a bypass door where the doors sit in front of each other and they slide back and forth, or there'll be a bifold. So those are two types of doors. Um, they have different pros and cons. The bypass doors here, you can only open half the closet at a time. So you're a little limited on how much you can see, but usually, I mean, most of us have more clothes we can wear in a day anyway. The bifold, you can open the whole closet up and see everything. So it's very open, very much more. I actually prefer this type myself. Um, the reason is, is they stay on their track easier because there's a bottom track and a top track. Whereas the bypass has one track it hangs from and if you bump it wrong, they fall off and they're a pain in the neck. Uh, what's that? And they're heavy. And it's a, you need like a lot of square footage to put them back on. You gotta have room in front of those doors because they have to hang them. Yes. No, they do not. Um, in fact, if you were born a child of the 70s, that would have been the first thing you would got rid of because you needed somewhere to hang your beads. And they took out the bedroom doors, they took out the closet doors, and they hung beads like crazy. So no, they do not. You can have a curtain. They do not have to have a door, but you do have to have a place to store clothes. That's kind of how the code designates what a bedroom is, because once it's designated a bedroom, there's egress code. So egress is a word that means exit, whereas ingress means entrance. So E or I is in, and E is exit. So ingress is how you get into a building. Egress is how you get out. Why do we need to get out? Fire. Fire. And we've had a ton of fires in Salt Lake, home fires this last month. Just a bunch of them. It's been kind of crazy. Maybe because people are staying home being stupid. They're playing with those candles and stuff like that. So, yeah, incense burners. There's a lot of that going on right now. So, so we've had a lot more fires. So, you got to kind of keep an eye on that as to what you're doing. Now, the next thing that you're going to look at is going to be in a bathroom. And you might have, um, well, this is kind of crazy drop this way. I never, I haven't done without a drafting tool for a long time. There's a, that's a tub, believe it or not. That's a pretty good tub. <laughs> yeah. um, so a tub is your next clue and the distance across a standard tub. We're not talking about the one in the master suite. Okay, a master bathtub in a master bath is, and, and I need you guys to be a little adult here, okay? The tubs in the master suite are designed for two. Okay, that's gonna probably wig four of you out. 
because now you're going, oh, mom and dad are what? Likewise, the shower in that room is also designed for two. Okay, let that sink in and just hope it's not your pants, okay? All right, so the width of a tub is gonna be 30 inches. The length, I hope that didn't surprise too many of you. If it did, I'm apologizing. It's gonna be five feet. Okay, so five foot length, three foot length. So they'll help you on figuring out what sizes things are. Hallways and stairways. So we'll just write that well. For some reason, it's like something's taking on my mouse. It's really weird. Halls and stairs. What width are those? Um, that's a little tight. Let's go 36 inches or three feet. Okay. And that makes it a little easier. So three feet. That way you can get a kind of a visual for what's going on there. Um, anything else? Some of you are saying, well, I need to measure rooms I don't have any idea on. Hey, Griffin's back. Yay. I kicked him out last hour. He's there all day. Okay, so there comes a time when you need to make a, a scale measurement of your building. And I'm going to try this. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to try it. Uh, hmm. Maybe I can. So that's going to go away. It's going to disappear forever. Uh, shoot. All right. That's not going to work the way I want it to. Let me see if I can figure out plan 69. 69 is when you have no other way of making things work. And that's okay. I usually can figure that. So I'm gonna open up one of your plans that you guys are using. And so this is the one that has 161 to pick from, and this is number 16 in that plan. Um, yay, team! Right. So I'm gonna pull that up, and I'm gonna try and zoom up on this a little bit. And this is where I get in trouble, so please bear with. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on the kitchen right here. And I'm not gonna have you guys worry about your kitchen design right now, because there are a thousand ways to make a kitchen work and four ways to make it not work, okay? And so we'll worry about that when we start putting cabinetry in in 3D, because then you'll be able to see it and it will feel better for you, okay? But what I wanna look at right now is this space, right here so this will this is a dashed line or it's actually called a hidden line and it represents the upper cabinets above the base cabinet so the countertop the distance from this line over to the wall is one foot makes it quick pretty easy put your plates in there and that that's about the cans the distance from the edge of the countertop to the wall is two foot okay so if you would take like a business card or um, a sticky note, and if you need a sticky, um, you're welcome to them. But you take the sticky and you make a mark where the wall is, and then mark with the upper cabinet and a mark with the base cabinet, and you keep moving up, you can make a ruler that way. Okay, and you can make it go the whole length of your sticky and not measure everything on your plan. It goes to the nearest foot. If the line on your plan is in the middle, it's six inches, and that's good enough what we're doing. Okay, does that make sense what I'm just saying there? So you're making a little ruler to go with your plan and it works only on the plan you make it on because when they're Xeroxed or printed, they get stretched and they're all slightly different. Okay, any questions on that? Online, live, dead? Or sinks are standard. Sinks, um, no, sinks are not standard. So in kitchens, there's a big trend right now for what are called country sinks. They're single basin instead of two. And, and if you're gonna do that, you have to have a, you're almost always gonna have a dishwasher. It's kind of a way to just rinse your dishes and throw them in the dishwasher. Um, but country sinks are really large and you can put a toddler in there and give them a bath, they're huge, okay? So they're kind of becoming very popular right now. We're also seeing things where there's a water um, a pot filler 
over the stove, which is a, a water faucet that swings out over your sink or from over your stove to fill pots. That's so you don't boil them over and dry them out. Um, that means you're cooking some that takes a long time to cook, you know, like gumbos, and that's usually where that originated in the South. So very long-term cooking things. Um, but they are very handy because then you're not trying to carry water across the kitchen and making spills and then slipping because you put in like fancy granite that's shiny and, and slippery, like downstairs. So when we do get to bad weather, and we might be having some rain at some point here pretty soon with those six hurricanes hitting the Gulf, um, they're coming. Great year. Love 2020. Um, it's just the, the year that keeps on giving. Um, yeah, it, every day. One more thing. When you come in the school, if it's wet, make sure you stay on the rugs that we put down there because that is highly polished. It's, it's the, the highest you can polish granite. It'll be, it'll be the slickest thing you've ever walked on. Okay. So just be very careful coming into the building if you come through the front doors. If you guys put up this back stair, it's not be an issue. But at some point, we're gonna get rid of these masks and I can see who you really are. And then we can walk on the floor and then we'll fall and break your nose. So it'll be great. Okay, um, most, of your, most of the plans you guys are doing have the laundry downstairs or near the back by the kitchen. Uh, and we'll talk more about this space in the 3D world. But each, your washer and dryer, if they're standard, meaning they're not the overcapacity stuff, they're 32 inches square, which doesn't seem weird, but they're, they're not a cube, they're tall. Um, you need to make sure that you allow room on the sides, between and in the back. In the back, it's for your power and for your water hoses and for your exhaust vent. So you need about four inches behind them to accommodate all that. And you need at least two inches on the sides in the middle so you can pull the suckers out if you have to repair them. Uh, if they're side by side and they're attached, they don't budge, they get wedged in there. So you wanna plan for what's happening on your plant and what's gonna go on there. Now this is, um, I don't know if this class is doing this plan or not. This is a pretty straightforward little plan. And we're gonna to get to the garage today very quickly because we're gonna try and finish this house out. Um, and so what I wanna do is turn you guys over to more of a lab and have you just work. But before we do that, I'll do another quick demo on a room or two to get you back in the groove so you can get taken off there. This is a single car garage, okay? It's 11 foot six by 23 foot deep. The depth is amazing, okay? Um, the, the standard garage depth is 20 feet. So those extra three feet are, are really good. That means you can stand in front of the car and pop the hood and change the oil and fill the fluids and all that stuff. The width is tight. So if you go, who is not driving it? Who cannot drive? Is there any of you still waiting for driver's ed? Okay. One of the hardest things you'll do is go and park in a 90 degree stall. It's actually harder to do in parallel parking because parallel parking is mathematical and you can program the car to do that. So if that's the case, then that makes it easy. But par par uh, parking in a nine degree stall, your car is about seven to seven and a half feet wide. If it's a standard sedan, which is what most of your driver's ed cars are. If you're in a coupe, you're looking about six feet. Smart cars are five feet. Your parking stall is eight feet that you pull into. So trying to navigate those bigger cars can be a little bit of a challenge. And you'll get dinged if your wheels are on the line. So we'll be careful of that. So when I look at a garage this size, I can get one car in there, but I've got stairs here. So if my car is pulled all the way in, then I'm gonna open the door to a stair. Most likely that door is gonna hit the step, and then they rip all the paint off of it. If you think it through. That means if you open the door all the way up, it's to hit these stairs. That's just the reality. That's, this is a very small house, cool, no big deal. So when you're working on your garage, you need to remember this, because this will be on your state test at the end of the semester. A double car garage is 20 foot by 20 foot. Again, same problem we've got here. That's just two of these, except we're now going narrower for the single car space. You only have 10 feet for each car. Can you open your door 18 inches and get out of it easily? 
no, and that's what you end up with. So when it comes to your garage, go ahead and add a few extra feet there, okay? I like to do mine around 23, 24 feet. Um, it just makes it easier. I mean, there's nowhere to put a lawnmower in this garage. There's nowhere to put a bike, shovels, you know, those things that we have in our house. So try and think along those lines, okay? That makes sense? Okay, questions at this point. Online folk, how you doing? We're up to four of you now. I'm doing fine. Oh, you're always doing fine. You're like Prince Charming, just fine. There's a play about Prince Charming being just fine. And then he gets passed over for the frog because the frog's not just fine, the frog's awesome. Sir. You have to restart? Do you have your plan with you? Yeah. That's okay. We can restart. Let's yeah. all about starts over. Yep. I'm going to go right in and show them how to do that. You betcha. Yep. We can always start over. And if you decide like next week this bail on the house plan you're doing, you can do that. Um, you just miss the a bonus of having this already done. But yeah, you can change it. Um, that's not uncommon. Okay. All right, let me do a little screen swapping. It's better. Just really, it's a quick and dirty, and I'll fix the garage, and I'm gonna fix, there's no bedrooms on this sucker. Yeah. Upstairs. Upstairs. Okay, is this yours? Yeah. Oh, cool, yours is just, my pad last up. Okay, so we got an upstairs bedroom, okay. So I'm just gonna work on this plan right here. Um, I don't know, right now the picture above, whoops, shows it's siding. Um, I don't know if I want siding. Maybe I want stone. Maybe I want brick. This could be a pretty cool colonial with brick. I could jazz it up a little bit. Um, we might even end up, and this is an option you have as well, uh, go ahead and building over the garage and put a bonus room there. And maybe another an, an apartment for when the kids have just had enough and you want to kick them out but not too far up. A good idea. Okay, so I'm going to work on this plan as the example, maybe because I can kick this out pretty quick. Um, your goal, my friends, is that what we're doing this last, the next, this, well, I guess we told a week and a half, is to do what we're doing a week and a half in an hour, is where you want to get to with your skill. Now that will take practice. It takes practice. You're not going to get to that speed by doing one house. That's why we have one, two, three. Okay. All right, so here we go. I'm going to pull this over, um, give you an idea where I'm starting at. This room right here. So here's where you probably got lost. These numbers matter. So the first number is the width. The second number is the depth or the height, okay? So think X, Y. It's always alphabetical. Now, I look at this 15 foot 7. That goes to this wall right here. It does not go over to the stair. Okay, so this whole stair entryway is undefined here. Okay, that means you can make it up. Mm -hmm. um, this is 44 foot by 26 foot. That is, both of those are divisible by four. No, it's not. They're close. It's half. Okay, two, so it's, they're even numbers. This is a very economical house, but this room is not. It's got an odd inch, and I don't like that at ever. So I'm going to shift where this wall position is by one inch. So this will be 15 foot eight. Mm -hmm. That way I can get a full sheet of drywall in there. Okay, because I don't want to cut off one inch. You see how wasteful yeah. that would be? Now, if this house was built in the 70s, we didn't care. But we, we've learned a lot, okay? So I'm gonna start in this room right here. And we're gonna start pumping this thing up. So we have a layer, I called it walls. I've got a color on it so you can see it. I start with a line, that's L, and enter, pick any point on the screen. With architecture, you don't have to start at zero, zero like we do in mechanical. In architecture, just pick a point and go in the direction I wanna go. So this living room I'm gonna make is 15, whoops, that's 18, 15 foot, eight inches, enter. And then I'm gonna enter again, and that's my line. Now, maybe your first line looks like this, fills your entire screen, okay? That's why we end the first line then zoom out so you can see it, okay? 
Okay, from this wall to the other wall between the living room and the kitchen is uh, 11 foot four. So the, once I have one line drawn, I'm really just off the offsets and it's O enter. I put in the value 11 apostrophe four quote. And those are on the same key. They're right next to the enter key. You have to use shift to get the quotes. Okay, so I enter that in. Select the line and I want to go up. I always start down, go up. So this is the front of the house is almost always at the bottom of the screen. Almost always when we draw them. And then we rotate it when we get to the site plan. Okay, so there's my first room. Now I'm going to put a wall between the living room and the kitchen area. And uh, so I'm going to do an offset. And to get back to the house, I, that's the last command I used. So just hit enter twice, winter. Again, I'm right back there. I put in my wall thickness with my wall thickness. Remember? We have a three and a half inch stud, a half inch chip board on each side, four and a half. Yep. So put in 4.5. You don't have to put inches if it's just inches. Okay. So you just, you can leave the quotes off if you're just doing inches. I select this line and go up. And now there's my wall thickness. So that's a two by four wall with half inch jibber on each side. I'm not going to show the gypsum board here in 2D. It's too liney. In 3D, you will. In 3D, it'll show the gypsum board. Okay, that's where we're going to fine tune these houses a lot. Okay, now the distance to the next wall is another 11 foot four. We good? Okay, so I'm gonna do enter again. I'm back in my offset command. If you don't want to do the enter, right click and just repeat. You can always do a right click, right click and repeat. Put in 11 foot, four inches. This is a very symmetrical house. Enter that in. I select the line that's next. And again, and then go up, okay? Now in theory, this should be approximately 26 feet. So I'm going to do a DI, like escape out of my command, DI enter, and this is going to do a quick measure. And I'm at 23 foot. So I'm missing, oh, I see what they did. Okay. So I'm missing almost three feet here. Okay. And that's going to throw you off a little bit. Let me show you why that's not correct. It is correct, but it's not. So this 26 foot here is counting in the outside of this pop out here, not where this wall starts. So it's a little misleading. So you have to do a little sleuthing, a little investigative work to see that this is a pop out here. Um, that means that they're assuming that this pop out is going to be, I would say probably about two feet with you get wall thickness, but we'll find that out pretty soon here. Okay. So we have to kind of think that through just a little bit what's going on. Hey, Chloe. Chloe's wearing her mask at home. Isn't that amazing? Of course, she's double dipping and doing another class at the same time. Hmm, that's trippy. Okay, so we have our windows, we have a door, we have windows and doors. So very, very symmetrical. This is what's called a Cape Cod. Um, it's an unusual Cape Cod in that it's two stories. Most Cape Cods are one story. Very small, very quaint. Um, it's bordering on a colonial style, uh, but where it's got the siding, that's what keeps it in that Cape Cod mode. Okay, so here we go. Questions before I move on? Okay, at this point, I'm gonna do a line and I can right click and go to recent inputs and I can find the last commands I've used. And it will actually list like eight commands. So you can just kind of go through and pick them and I'm just going to draw a line and close off this part of the house. And then the same thing below, repeat line and close off this room. I'm not going to put a line right here where a wall is. There's no gypsum board there. I'm going to just show the face of the way the paint would be. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I do know on this is the living room. And the living room has what's called a pony wall. They're very not done anymore. They're very old school. So this little wall right here is a decorative wall. Most likely it was only four feet tall. And then there's a little wood spindle 
that goes out this corner. Uh, you see, it's a little square. Mm -hmm. This is a very old house. So you have this little half wall, goes up four feet. Then on the wall is a decorative wood spin that goes up to the ceiling. You might find something like that in I Dream of Genie or Bewitched or Brady Bunch on that time period. Okay. So you can change this out if this is your plan. Feel free to mix it up and do something different there. It is nice to have a barrier when the door opens that you don't fill the house with all cold air. Um, that's fine. There's also, we got stairs going up and stairs going down. So this house does have a basement. Maybe you didn't know that. Um, so kudos on that one. And I am not a fan of putting washer and dryers in closets. Um, especially when you're in a bathroom. What happens if you take your brand new clean clothes and drop on the floor? What's going to happen in here? Dirty. Dirty, instantly. And why? Can we be really adult here and talk about this part? Why are bathroom floors so yucky? Whose fault is that? I wish. Anyone that's male. Okay, so if you're a boy, this floor's problems are all yours. Because no matter how good of a hunter you are, not every gun comes with a scope. That get you there? Yeah, you'll you'll you probably miss. Okay, so we we have a problem. So what will we never put on the flooring in a bathroom? What flooring will we never use? Carpet. Carpet. And yet in the '70s they carpeted them like crazy. There are tons of bathrooms carpeted. They carpeted the kitchen too. You don't do carpet in kitchens either. Um, you know, if you go into a restaurant and have carpet and the floors hasn't been cleaned, you can imagine what the kitchens are like. Yeah. How thick are our main walls? Your outside? This like thin main wall. Like the wall down here in the middle? Yeah. Four and a half inches. Yep. Two by fours are really strong. The only reason we have to go thicker on the outside wall is the code now requires that we put more insulation in our homes than ever before to try and maintain efficiency. So we're putting an R24 in the walls now, and you can't get that in a two by four wall. No matter what you do, you, you just can't do that. So we've kind of upped the game quite a bit there. And we started doing that in the late eighties. So we've, we've come quite a bit there. Okay, so let's put in this little wall. And um, I don't know how long it goes. I'm gonna guess at it, because that's all I've got. So I'm gonna go back to an offset. And the width of my living room here is 15 foot, and I'm gonna add um, an inch to it. So I'm gonna go 15 foot eight in this case. So the inside of this wall comes over. Wow, that's right where I told that wall to end. And then do my enter, enter, change the 4.5 and offset. And there's that what point wall is gonna be. And there's a couple of things about the code that can help you here. So let's talk about that. I think there's a, YouTube channel that says, let's talk about that. Is that good mid for morning? Yeah. I used to like those guys. Now they're just gross. But it eats crayons for fun. It's just gross. Okay. In the building code, this area in front of your stair is called a landing. There's also one at the top of the stairs. That's where you get off the stairs to catch your breath before you die. Okay. And that's literal because people used to die on stairs in the United States all the time because they're too steep. Okay, now, if the stair is three feet wide, then the landing in front must be three feet. So it has to be a square for your landing. So it's the width of the stair, and then that same distance out. So if there's a four foot stair, then the landing is four feet. Okay, if it's a five foot stair, then the landing is five feet. So we're gonna assume three feet, even though this looks a little proportionally weird. Um, that's okay. So we're going to consider from this edge of the step to the wall, three feet. You also, what is that? You also have to have a door, a single door, somewhere in the exterior of the building that is three feet wide. So that's to get the big furniture through. It typically is the front door, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a back door. If your piano goes in the back of the house, put the back, put the big door there. Okay. Um, but there's typically one door that has to be three feet wide or wider. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One, to get furniture in the house. One, it's also the first entrance point the firefighters are going to use. And if you have a small, tiny door, 
they've got these big old backpacks with them now, and they, they can't get through. So we have to make sure we can get them in the building. Okay. So that gives me a couple of clues. That this is about three feet, maybe a little bit more. So if I made the swall three foot six, probably work. I can even take it up a little higher and make it a five foot length of wall and actually make a little hallway there. So I can do quite a few things. But I'll just, I'll just kind of cap it off here at three feet. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to do back to my offsets, 36, because it's easy to put in feet. I'm going to pop this line. Oh, that didn't work. Pop that up. OK, now we're going to talk about some AutoCAD things in a minute. I want to close this off. I don't want the lines to keep going up. This is where I want the wall to end. There's about six ways I can think of right now to do that. So I'm going to do it as easy as I possibly can. The easiest way to do this is with the fillet command. To find the fillet in the modify, that's right underneath trim. Trim is the other way to do that. But if I click on fillet and I look down in my command line, I see that the radius is set to zero. That's the default for AutoCAD. It is not the default for Revit. Mm -hmm. Revit gives you like a six inch radius, which sucks. You don't want rounded walls if you don't want to pay for it, because the rounded wall is really expensive. But this is good for now. So what I need to do there is I pick one wall, and I can see what happens when I pick the lines. I get a little preview. So I'm going to go to the furthest one first, and then I'm going to right click and repeat that and go backwards to close it off. So see, what if I go this way, that would be bad. Good, bad, good, bad. OK? So now I've got this little wing coming out here. OK? Oh, yeah. OK, F for fillet. I pick the line that's going to be my little cat piece. And I can flow over and see previews of what's happening. Nope. Yep, nope, yep, nope, yep, yep. Let me go that one. Then I right click and repeat. And I want to close it off that way. So I want to think about how to create the corner I want to maintain. One, two. Buckle my shoe. Yeah. Okay. So now we have this setup. Okay. All right. That now takes me to the entry in which I have no idea where that entry is because it doesn't tell me. So I know hallways. So I'm going to do offsets. And this is what we talked about before. Hallways and stairways are three feet. So I do an offset. I'm already at three feet. I enter that in with the right click of the mouse button, pick the wall, and I go to the right. So this is where that hallway is going to come through. Yay. Then I'm going to go over another three feet for the stair. So I'm going to right click, enter. Got to get back into my offset. I clicked too many times. It's okay. This makes me a bad person. There's my, my stair is going to be. That's the width of my stair. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, stairs got to go all the way up to this wall. Okay. So there's a couple ways I can do that. So I'm going to show you a few more AutoCAD commands. And I put in your Canvas course in the announcements last night um, all of the hotkeys for AutoCAD. There's a couple hundred of them. Okay. I'm not going to make you memorize them. You'll, you'll, if, usually, if you think about what you want to do, it's going to be there. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I need this wall system to come across a lot further because it actually goes through the entire house. Now, looking on your plans, I need you all to look at them very carefully. When you have a wall that goes from one side of the house to the other, that is always a bearing wall. And if you watched HDTV, bearing walls you don't touch or it's really expensive. So this wall is carrying half the weight of the roof. Okay, it carries half the weight of the roof. So if we tear it down, we're causing problems. And most likely this wall continues upstairs right here. Now that means that in this section right here in this upper bedroom, there's a beam. There has to be a beam in order to make that work. Okay, so we've got wall and a beam here. And, and you get to where you can look at plans and see that. Um, in my house I'm in right now, my wife keeps wanting to tear a wall down, but it's a bearing wall. And the beam to replace that wall 
is $2,000. We're not taking the wall down, okay? It's just not gonna happen. So we have to kind of look at your plans a little bit and that helps you with where your footings will go and our foundation. And as we get moving along there, it makes it a little easier. Okay, so back to AutoCAD. Here's how we're gonna fix that. First, I'm gonna do the stretch command. That's done by typing the letter S. Now, I try and remember if I'm not talking to hit escape between each command so I don't have to get stuck in them. That's why I keep clicking so much. So if you hit escape, that clears your command. Type S and enter. The stretch command says, well, select by crossing window or crossing polygon the objects to stretch. You're looking for endpoints, okay? There's two endpoints right here. So if I did a selection with the blue, this will not work. That means the entire line has to be inside there. And then all I'm doing is moving the wall. So it has to be a crossing. So right is blue, left is green. I want to do this has to touch the lines. Okay. So you guys are wearing too many sweats. You get sleepy. You got to wake you up. I have a way. So select that. Now they're selected and it highlights all of the grips as well. Well, that's dandy. I could just grab a grip now and stretch it, or I could enter it in and stretch the whole thing at once. That was cool, huh? Can you do that again? So now my wall goes far enough. So if you're doing a stretch, you grab the endpoints, enter it, pick a point, and drag. You're just stretching that wall. Okay? Just makes it quick and easy. Well, now the stair is going to run right into that. And so what I want to do, what I need to do is extend these two lines. I'm going to go ahead and make them the wall thickness now because uh, I just realized I made a mistake, but that's okay. It only makes me bad for a minute. Um, I'm going to do an offset of four and a half inches here, and then this guy, and then do twice. So while I'm in the command, you can just keep going. That's kind of fun, you just keep going. You can go as long as you want, okay? What I need to do is this first line, and then delete, and then these two here, and then delete. Didn't the I didn't wall. shift it over for the wall. Yeah, I just put lines in and didn't make wall thicknesses. So I've still got three feet here, and three feet in between. So I just use parallel mathematics to make that work. Okay, and now instead of doing the stretch command, there's one that's faster. And this command is called extend, and it's done by typing EX, and I enter that in, and I select where I want the lines to go. So I pick the line below, enter that in, and then I can just window those two guys and boom, they're there. Just, just that quick. Makes it really fast and efficient. Okay. Now, I need to do another change is that this stair doesn't come all the way down here. It mm -hmm. starts about here. So I need to stretch those up. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. You have what are called object snaps built into your selection sets. They're controlled here in this little icon that has a square and a square. So it's a big square with a little square on the corner. If you hit the down arrow, you have all of these ways of controlling a line. And really, I need endpoints most of the time. Um, I usually don't keep intersection on because it grabs everything. Perpendicular, midpoint. Um, those are my ones I usually have on regularly, but they're pretty easy to turn off and on. Um, you just come toggle them on. You can also, if you're in the middle of a command, so maybe I'm doing a line, and I pick a point. And I want that line to come all the way to the midpoint of this one. If you just type in MID, the first letter of any of those O snaps, the first three letters, then it, when you enter that in, it has to go to that point. Okay, it overrides all of them that are on there, and you can just force it to go where you want. So if it's a circle, I get a quadrant or center, um, perpendicular, okay? But I'm gonna use those O snaps for my stretch. Okay, so maybe S for stretch. I'm going to window the endpoints. I'm going to enter those in. I'm going to grab an endpoint down here. And I want to go to this perpendicular point. So I'm going to type P. 
ER for perpendicular. I enter that in and I come to this line. And it's gonna look like there's, see that little perpendicular symbol in the middle, the little green guy? Boom, now they're right where I want them. So now I can go back to my recents, get my line, and just close these guys off. It's nice and pretty, okay? So that'll become a, um, that, um, a stairway at some point. Well, lo and behold, I now know where my family room over here starts. Kind of worked out serendipitously. Serendipitous, serendip can't say it, doesn't matter. Worked out swell. Okay, you guys doing okay? Questions? Freakouts? Concerns? Lots of concerns? Like, come do this for me? Yeah. So when I type stretch, it's just moving the line into a stretch, isn't it? Okay. If you just have to, if you include the whole line, you'll move it. You just have to get the endpoints. Okay. How should I do Okay. So let me, I'm going to pause here a minute before I finish this out. Um, if you guys online have questions, start thinking about them. I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go do some one-on-ones. There's a lot of individualized issues. So I'll be right back and think away. Hey, online guys, how is your lab coming and do you have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Sweet. Okay, we're coming up on almost one. Okay. All right, so what we're doing now is you're just offsetting across here. Um, you guys just keep working. Don't stop, just keep moving. I gotta go grab the door. Plan is sitting like this. 
Okay. So here's what we On this plan, this is the Yes. 
Come down, over, down, over. Yep, you got it. Hey, anyone? Okay, do you guys have any questions on the offset tool, the trim tool, the fillet tool, any of those? The stretch one. Okay. Here we go. I don't know where I'm at. I'm lost in space. Okay. So I've got a living room, I've got a stairway. So I've got to do a family room right here. That's my next thing. So I'm back in to my offset. My family room is 11 sticks. It's 11.5 feet. Select the wall that I have, move over. Oh, look, those walls go too long. Oh, suck. That's not so cool. Okay, so here's the stretch tool. You're watching Buckle Bobby? Okay, here it goes. To use the stretch tool, clear out your command. Escape, 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 escape. S, enter. If you read your command line down here, it says select objects to stretch by crossing window or crossing polygon. So I come up here, click one to the left mouse button, and I drag to the left so it's a green crossing fence. If it's blue, it's no good. Okay, blue, bad, green, good. I grab just the ends of that line. I don't need all of it. I just need this portion of it. I can go all the way up to here, right to this point. But I just want the ends. When I have it selected, I hit enter with my right mouse button. Then I grab an end point. In this case, I'm going to go to the wall position. Just slide it over. You'll either get a perpendicular or an end point symbol. So it's either going to be a perpendicular chair or it's going to be a square, green square. Click, and it's stretched. Okay, just follow the command line. It will, it will teach you. It's very good at doing that. Okay. All right, now from this wall forward, my fabric room is 13 foot four deep. So let's go get that in there. Another offset for the day 13 foot four inches. I grab this inside wall. It's going to take the whole balloon wall because I haven't trimmed very well. Comes down to here. Oh, good. Now, one thing I do know is it's going to line up with this wall. So that's kind of fortuitous. Okay, so I'm going to do a little trim here because it's kind of driving me nuts. So TR for trim. Window these walls so they're selected. Clean out these little gaps. So your walls are all one solid maze. Now, to connect these two, I'm going to use the fillet. F enter. One line, two line. Now I've got a line that comes across here. It goes across the stairs. It actually ends so that the inside walls line up. So if I do an override of P, E, R, it's going to be perpendicular to this wall right here. And they line up. If I take the line up, so I'm just going to bring, bring it down. Because that's where I need them to line up. So now I've got a crosser here. So I'm going to clean that off with a fillet. F enter. One line, two lines. Look at the preview, make sure it's what you want. Now I've got my family room. Okay, I've got a kitchen up above still to do um, with a laundry bath kind of thing in there. Okay, oops, sorry, my mask slipped. So sorry. Um, it's one of those days. Okay, and then be just finish that real quick and I'll come around again and help you. We've got until 135. So then an offset. 
my width is 22 foot 8 inches. So I take this wall all the way over. That doesn't look right. I think they're lying. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's lying. Yeah, that doesn't look right to me at all. So what that's telling me is not very, very good. So if I look at my plan, that didn't feel right. You can leave the door open as you go. Make sure you got your mask on. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got a hallway here, a stairway here, and my kitchen, if I show you that plan again, when I do the 20 foot eight, this wall right here lined up with this. That's not too surprising, actually. Oftentimes, when they publish these plans to be sold, they will modify a dimension or two so they don't add up. So if I was to add up 11, 16, plus 15, 7, um, 22, that, that doesn't make sense, right? The math isn't quite right on this. And, and you have to realize they're doing that intentionally so you don't do what you're doing, even though you can do what you're doing because you're learning how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. I just want to make sure I've got enough room for this utility room. The rest of it doesn't really matter. If the kitchen's bigger, great. Okay, so let's talk about this. I told you these had to be 32 inches square. That means this closet needs to be 36 inches for a laundry room. Then the four and a half. Now, at that point, I'll make sure these doors open. Okay, so I have room for the doors. In front of a water closet, you need two feet. Why two feet? Where does that number come from? Your legs. It's from your knees to your bottom of your feet. So if you have to worship the great porcelain god of whiteness, you can get down in front of it. Okay. So we need two feet there. Um, the other reason is kind of one you don't really think about. When you're on this little throne, you need to be able to stretch your legs out because if they go numb, you can die there. Okay, so if you spend too much time on a water closet, it cuts off the major artery at the back of your legs. If your feet, legs go numb, it is possible you stand up, you have a blood clot go right to your brain, you die. So you don't really want to spend a lot of time there. If you're reading the world's greatest novel, this is not the place to do it. Okay. In yeah, sitting, we're not designed to sit. The human body is not designed to be sitting. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to put pressure on those back sciatic veins. That's not, it's not good. So yay. <laughs> Biology, love it. Um, we can do quite a bit, but you want to not be set in one position very long. Okay, so that's why it's nice to get up and take a break. And I haven't done that to you today, I apologize. Okay, so let me figure my math. Three foot, four and a half inches, two feet, another 30, six, seven. If I make this eight feet, I'll have plenty of room there. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this an eight foot area. I, I'm just gonna make it that. It's my design, I can do what I want. Neener, neener, neener. Okay, so I'm gonna do a line. I'm just gonna carry this back wall up. I use the fillet tool to close it off with what I have. I'll do an offset, eight feet. Ooh, that doesn't match. Look, that doesn't match. Oh, Maynard. So I'm gonna do a stretch and fix that. Stretch, grab those lines, enter that in, end point, use my override perpendicular. Now it matches. Keep your lines straight, makes you great. Back to offset, eight foot. Going back. That feels like it matches. Look at that. That's where that wall would be. Proportioning, it looks about right. So I'm happy with that. Okay. So now I'm going to offset again and put in the laundry room area. So now that I've got that all figured out. I'm going to do 36 inches for three feet. That's going to pop forward. Return to my offset, four and a half inches for the wall. I'm going to do that wall. I'm going to do this at the same time because I'm there. And I can do that because they're parallel, which is great. And then they come down and create the rest of this little entryway thing. So for my bath, I need room for the water closet. That's going to be 36 inches. We can go 30, 
But again, we talked about how tight it is to get in there and work on it, clean it. So 36 makes that a little more doable. Um, I need room for my sink. So I'm gonna go down five feet for that. We just have a little pedestal sink in there. Uh, five feet's not gonna do it for the then there's six feet. Because five feet will not fit my laundry room. So offset. Six foot. Bring this wall down. So then 72 inches. Enter again, 4.5. Bring that down. That ends my laundry area. Now here's that trim tool you guys are fighting. Trim window greatly. Start whacking away what I don't need. Systematically removing lines that I will have to clean up later anyway. And since I've got everything selected at once, it's just a quick march through, click them. Clicking away. Okay, so now I've got laundry room, bathroom. There's a little um, closet here. It's not very big. Uh, it's called 30 inches because I don't know and I don't want to measure it. So do 30. Looks about right. Four and a half. Dang. Go stem. And the depth of that's two feet. Back to my offset. 24. Enter that in. Repeat the offset. 4.5, and I might have to shift this a little bit depending on where I'm going to put doors. It's an option. And then they do the fillet to clean up these corners. Escape, F, enter. Corner one, corner two. Back to the trim mode because I've got some cleanup. Take out that little chunk and that little guy. There's going to be a doorway here. Pass through, should be three feet there. Now, the tool I want to show you on your keyboard is over here in utilities, you've got a ruler. If you downplay it, there's distance, there's a radius measure, angle measures, area, volume. Very handy things. If you do the quick, and I just put this inside, it'll give me those measurements. Now, what I want to know is this. I've only got two foot one for where a hallway is supposed to be. I need three feet. So this cannot be two foot six if this it's two foot one. I need another foot there. So stretch is going to fix that. This will take that up 12 inches. Not much of a closet. I will probably rework that in 3D because I really don't like what that's looking like. But I don't need to worry about that now. I've got walls. If they're not perfect, that's fine. When you get into 3D, you'll have exact values. So near a sixteenth of an inch and everything works itself out. That whole floor plan is now done. I'm not going to draw the stairs. Uh, I'm not going to worry, worry about the ex exterior walls. I could do that. We got time. You guys want exterior walls today? Okay, here's how you figure. Okay, this is your choices for exterior walls. You can do siding. And again, your wall, you're always going to start with a half inch chipboard. Then you're going to do a, half, a five and a half inch stud. Then you do a three quarter inch sheathing. That's the plywood that goes on the outside. We have to put that on in Utah because we're a seismic zone three, almost a four. Magna kind of rewalked the numbers a little bit. So we're probably going to a seismic zone four, which is what California is. Okay, that's crazy to think about. That's what we're going to. Um, so I need to have that to hold the building together when it shakes. We also have really strong winds in Utah. Our average wind load coming out of the canyons, just normal canyon wind, is 90 miles an hour. That's a category one tornado. So in the Midwest, that's huge. We don't even think about it here because we have it every day, every day. So we have to plan for that wind. So we put on a thicker sheathing, three quarters of an inch. Then we have whatever the siding material is, usually figure an inch. So let's go back through the numbers, half inch, Five and a half, we're not six. Six and three quarter with the sheathing. Seven and three quarter with the um, siding. We're gonna make the outside walls for siding eight inches thick, okay? So that would be an offset of eight inches. And you do that all the way around, 
Okay. Big thick wall. Okay, now if we go to, and that's for vinyl or aluminum siding, which are, or wood siding, they all fit in that same thickness category. So there's the three sidings. If you're gonna do brick, everything's the same except the siding. So we get the sheathing, the stud, and the jib board the same. After the sheathing, you need one inch of airspace. Anything made out of concrete or clay like brick sucks in water like a sponge. And so we have to have an area there to dry it out. So we go five and a half, a half, that's six, six and three quarter, plus one, seven and three quarter. Then the thickness of the brick is three and five eighths. Okay, now we're at 10 inch wall if you're doing brick or stone. 10 inch wall for brick or stone. The weird duck out there is stucco. Stucco is anywhere between eight inches and 12 inches. Okay, so stucco can be built up and um, I'll show you some videos on that when we get into 3D and do materials and exterior. So you can decide how you want to treat your stucco. So your stucco, I'd probably just do it eight, but your brick is gonna be 10. Brick and stone's 10, stucco, eight, um, siding, eight, and you should be in good shape. That seems really thick, okay, and it is. We, our walls are much thicker now than they were with homes built 20 years ago. So we have a new building code every four years. And so that's, that's three and a half codes. And that's a lot of change, okay? So things are a lot thicker. Okay, that should get you kind of wrapping up where you want to go. Let you just kind of work. You got about 20 minutes of work time. Um, questions online? You guys online, do you have questions? No. No. The minimum with the tub? Yeah. A minimum size bathroom with a tub is five by seven. They're the smallest you can go. Okay. There, there's no way to fit anything else in that. But usually we do five by eight, but five by seven is your smallest. So much to think of. So for the outside part of the garage, does that have to have eight inches? If you're doing the same material. A lot of times garages go for chain material. So yeah, if you're, if you're doing the same material around it, make it the same thing as the rest of the house. If you aren't doing a tub or a shower, can't you get a little smaller? You can get a little bit smaller. Your small, this is what's crazy, guys. Your smallest shower you can buy is 30 inches by 30 inches. So I want you to think about where your wingspan is on mm -hmm. that, okay? You're, you're hitting elbows on the side of the shower when you do that. And that's what most people buy to remodel their basements with. So that's your smallest. Then showers go custom from then on out. You can get whatever size. Most common is four foot by 30 inches. And that's basically a shortened tub. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you can get a little bit smaller if you do a shower. That's why you see three quarter baths in basements, because we want more bedroom space or family room space. Mm -hmm. One of those two things. I'm having trouble with my offset. What's it doing? Uh, so, when I type in the number and click, it doesn't copy. Okay, hit escape first and get out of commands and try it again. So you want to kind of clear out your commands. I, I try and get in the habit. You do a command, hit escape to get out of it. So you get a fresh start. See so if that does it. And if not, I'll be right there. Okay. Okay. Um, online kids, we're shutting down for the day. If you have questions, again, send me emails and we'll respond to them and get things all set. Okay.